Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, Hello. relax, take a midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux. Uh, fair warning, as always, uh, we do our best to try not to put you to sleep, so there will be jokes. There might even be laughter <laughs> if you're looking for something to put you to bed. Just listen to the sound of my voice. Um, that'd be nightmares. Anyway, <laughs> I'm Vince Stone. That's Joe Bryant. That's Pedro Mateus, and we Hello. do have everyone else joining us live, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Moon Time. What's up, everyone? Big oh, show boy. we got to take yeah. care of. Pedro, <laughs> you just finished a uh, project, man. You did a little stream yesterday. Mm -hmm. I did, and uh, joined by uh, Shet Realm member uh, Mayor Theron there, uh, who decided, you know what, it's a good idea to uh, cram... Um, PC hardware into a console box. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to help this uh, poor fool along by getting him the uh, GPU he has on his uh, wish list. <laughs> so yeah, he got me the 1650. So I had a monster. stream. It's like, all right, we're going to talk about it. You what and Dave, you, what, let's go. <laughs> what are your thoughts on building a PC inside of a um, taxidermy? It's um, <laughs> a lot easier than I expected. At the same time, I wish I could do more, but I realized that, oh yeah, my one power tool is a Dremel. There's oh. only so much I can do. <laughs> and everything looks like a nail. <laughs> yeah, it's basically a hammer at that point. It's like, there, done. <laughs> Jilly Bean, what's new with you? Oh, so I went to Community Hack Night at Riot Games once again. They let you back and... in? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we made plans for for scale 18x uh, for our Linux Chicks LA booth and for Linux Gamecast, the equipment we need for interviewing and and uh, taking That's video not a and whatnot. Way to refer to Alan. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, my cameraman. <laughs> He's awesome. But I just want to let and let everyone to know if they you can get. 50% off your scale 18x registration if you use the promo code CHIX on the first page of the registration. So that's a nice thing. And gosh, so all the scale stuff. And then also I installed and am loving Ubuntu Mate 1910 on my broadcasting rig. And this is the first time I'm not using an LTS. <laughs> so this is this is unique for me. It's still a stable version, but it's you not LTS. <laughs> edge Lord. <laughs> yes. And thank you to Wimpy. <laughs> and actually, yeah, I've I've noticed improvement in game performance. So that's mm. that's always a good thing. There were yes. a lot of changes made to that compositor. <laughs> yes. Oh, ah. Marco is wonderful. <laughs> well, as for every reward, there must be a sacrifice. So I deinstalled Ubuntu. Ah. Mm. <laughs> Replaced it with Debian. On, um, ah, okay. On Jackbox. Jackbox. On Jackbox? Yeah. <laughs> Back there, hanging out. Uh, I did for real-time curdle, and for a lot of stuff I'm going to be doing coming up, not that there was anything wrong with 1804 LTS, because if you're going to be running one on a server, you know, just for the uh, support that thing's going to have, it's going to have long legs. Yep. I do recommend that, but... I bought a thing. If you watched uh, Keep Track on so Social Media or if you watched Saturday's show, I, I was like, hmm, I wonder what a $1,200 audio interface sounds like. Hmm. <laughs> so I picked one up and for like 60 bucks because, you know, it's FireWire interface and plugged it in. Went through all the stuff and turned, come to find out, I mean, it's got a driver in the Linux kernel. I was like, oh, that's neat. I'm going to plug it in. going to do the whole thing. Just kind of play with it. It's a big chunk of stuff. It's like a 2U rack. It's a Digimax 003 made from Avid. You might have heard of them. Oh, yes. <laughs> and um, clicking noise. I got in the recording. I was like, oh, that's unfortunate. You know, because of course uh, I checked everything and everyone's like, yeah, it works. It works. You know, I mean, everyone, the other person who has one. And so I tracked down who was in charge of the also drivers in the kernel. And I was like, oh, you have GitHub. All right. And let's open a little bug. Hey, man, you want to chat? Uh, I, I, I barely speak English. He barely speaks English. We have a great um, <laughs> report going on. And with the time zones between here and Japan, we've been playing tactics. And it's like, yo, man, um, getting this clicking noise, right? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's an issue with the device. Mm. I talked about a couple of years ago on archive post one place inside of SourceForge. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I'm getting to the point, kids. Don't worry. Um, then that one's like, 
So the one thing this interface is supposed to do, it fails at, and that's not listed. You got this accepted in the kernel. Good on you. Um, <laughs> but he's already, already said, like, yo, we're I'm dumping logs and getting data uh, to him. He's like, this is like, I'm going to try to fix this because that's what it takes sometimes. You're like, hey, man, I didn't know anyone was still playing with these. I, now I'm going to see if I can get the clock issue synced with the internal bus and firewire. We're, we're going to work on it. So I'm, I'm going to keep it around. It's not like I can do anything with it, but it did spark a thought, mm -hmm. an idea. And, and I kind of had my Gallifrey falls no more moment after this, because I can afford to burn a hundred bucks on something. But I, I was thinking about, you know, there's been times I couldn't have like, if I put my money aside and I bought this and got it used, I'm like, yeah, hey, this is my thing. And I'm going to start doing stuff on Linux. And I ran into that you don't get to return stuff like this, you know? Yeah. Because you're buying used yeah. hardware. It's like, we really need to do something about this um, for people trying to produce music on Linux, for people who want to do audio recordings, podcasts, record guitar, drums, anything like that. There's not a good current database of any sorts. It's scattershot between like FFADO org and Linux musicians buried in threads. It's not accurate. And most importantly, none of it's up to date. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm going to do it myself. Oh, yeah, the, then. This is, this is how you got Linux game cast kids 10 years yeah. ago. I was like, nobody's doing this. I'm not yes. the right person to do this, uh, but okay. If I got to do it. So I'm going to be um, getting all these devices that I can off of eBay I've already started my like 99 cents list because I want, I want the junk, you know, give me the stuff and I'm going to pull it in. We're going to video it. We're going to document it. We're going to figure out what works, how it works, if it's good and create a legitimate database of audio interfaces that you can pick up from old ancient PCI stuff to firewire to current USBs. Mm -hmm. Um, and I want your old hardware. That's kind of the point of this. If you know of anyone or if you in your closet, you're like, Hey man, I got something with an XLR jack or a quarter inch jack and it plugs into a computer and I don't want it anymore. And you would be throwing it away. Hit, hit me up on the contact form on Linux like, Gamecast. It's like, send me your old audio junk and um, let me test it so we can get it added to the list. And I'm going to be buying a bunch of the stuff out of pocket too. So this is, this is shooting myself on both feet. It's kind of brilliant, but it needs, <laughs> it needs to get done. Yes. So... And it's going to be a gateway drug. It's going to be a way to spread Linux because I'm like, yo, do you want to use this really nice audio button? It won't work on Windows. And there's not a Mac with a FireWire port on it. Ah, you want to run Linux? Come on. Let me, let me get you set up. That's going to be our gateway drug. So we got gaming. And I'm also going to be trying to sneak in audio and music production on them to spread the penguin love. <laughs> Yay. That's my story. I look forward to it. Yay. And I'm still waiting. <laughs> You're going to get me playing guitar. That's going to be terrifying. That's Stay awesome. Stay tuned, kids. Um, we're going to do this right. We're going to do this right. I'm going to have to get some equipment, but that's going to come down. We're going to work with what we have for right now until we get all the uh, testing methods down exactly how I want to flow with it. But yeah, that's what I've been up to. Yay. Mm, yes. Cool. Maybe Fine. I'll buy a brand new Threadripper. Wait, I already have one. Uh, can I get two? Yeah. <laughs> yes. We'd all love one of these. <laughs> Let's get right into it after that. Uh, System 76, the Leo Major, now available with Ryzen 3990X. See what 64 cores can do to your wallet. I mean, for you. You can apply circular motion blur in 44 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> yes. Mm, you can compile the Linux kernel in 24 seconds. Ooh. <laughs> Render a blender seat in classroom in 76 nice. seconds. And what mm -hmm. other? Oh, empty your wallet in eight seconds. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> dude, this, this is actually pretty, pretty cool. Um, And they were right on it. This was like day of release. They were like, yo, mm -hmm. yes. yo, we have one of our Atari looking cases and everything ready to go. <laughs> I don't know, it's really the closest thing to an Atari you can get nowadays. Uh, <laughs> oh. Dude, it, it is a better They're love beautiful. story than, you know, the Atari hotels. That's a real thing. So mm -hmm. I wanted to put one together, you know, a realistic one. As somebody sitting here coming to you with a Threadripper in front of them that they built. Um, thanks to all the beautiful party patrons. We did it on a wicked tight budget, but we got it together. This 
was like, man, I would to assemble one that I would, of course it's going to be birch. No wall. Yes. Birch would be, yeah. <laughs> 18, let's go with an LTS. And of course we're going to get the $2,900 option for the processor. Now this is, you know, I, I know everyone likes to just max out everything. You know, they want to Apple the computer, but realistically, mm -hmm. let's go with 32 gigs of RAM. I want a two terabyte NVMe. And uh, uh, nope, no, no additional. I'm good with that. No additional nope. NVMe. We're, we're good with the SSD. <laughs> Two and a half inch. <laughs> GPU selection is where I ran into yeah. a little bit of an issue because let's say I want, because I definitely want two GPUs. I want one for the monitor to power the displays and I want a nice big... Uh, Compute. <laughs> but I have a 2080 or 2080 Ti and I want a 2070. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I go to 2070, I can do 2080, 2080 Ti, 2080, 2080 or 20, um, 2080 Ti, 2080. <laughs> there, there's it seems no like a rather arbitrary limitation, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this this genuinely, because again, I, I when I was putting this together, I was thinking, okay, let's do this as realistic, you know, it's like, no, I just want two 2080 TIs or Titan RTXs. But in a realistic configuration, I'd get a 2060 and I would get a 2070 Super just mm -hmm. for those extra CUDA cores. This is a render card. There's not an option. Um, I wonder if that is by intent or not. But yeah, that's definitely a limitation. That's something I'd be looking for with DaVinci Resolve because it's genuinely a checkbox inside of Resolve. I'm like, hey, I want to use one for compute and one for display and, you know, just for your timeline and everything else. But uh, what did it end up for? $7,774, which sounds like a lot, but for <laughs> I know. a rendering workstation, something that I can yeah. legitimately do work on that has a warranty and has support. If I was buying this yes. for a company, that's a good price, I think. Yeah, I mean, they're comparably priced to others in the industry like Dell. And uh, look at, yeah, the, the Apple Mac Pro. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so, 6,000 with an RX 580. Exactly, mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, and the only thing I noticed about this was uh, the um, RX 552 gig is, is, is their lowest end option. And I think it should be a little higher, maybe RX 560 with four gig, just, just because they're inexpensive now. But that was, that was the only uh, complaint that I saw. I don't have many. <laughs> I would die to have this for my Blender Moto and Maya renders. <laughs> I would like to build a Da Vinci box for that, but like the Radian, the Radian series with nothing against the 5700, 5700 XT, those, Th those are tinker toys compared to, I know it's, you consider an older architecture, but the Vega, mm -hmm. Vega 7, which is... The Radeon 7. Radeon 7, yeah. Yeah. Because what did the thing have, like, H it had HBM2, but what was that stack? Uh, 16, 16 gigs, gigs, I think, yeah. 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 <laughs> Far as crunching, like, numbers, even in Blender, that's that's the AMD option I would go for, but I know they're, they've been end of life, but... Hmm. I yeah, know. and they're not dropping in price at all. Um, no. Although, just for an exercise, I, I did try. Pedro, in my... I, Pedro, I know you're not about to and blow people's mind by telling them that you could build one cheaper yourself, because that's impossible. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, what I'm going to say is don't try and build like a high-end uh, home desktop PC inside the Thelio. You're not going to like the result because I built basically the equivalent of this configuration that I have right now, eight cores, 16 threads, and something that performs about on par with the 1080, which in the case of the Thelio is a 2070 Super. So it's slightly better parts in the 900, uh, 9800X from Intel. Mm -hmm. So yeah, slightly better uh, on a per part uh, performance. But when you look at the price, uh, this one, I put it together. If you were going to put one together exactly as I have it right now, yep. it would cost I, I, you... We have a live feed under your desk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that looks like my Mine computer. is definitely not as pink <laughs> or as uh, water-cooled, but uh, it is. it costs around $1,500 for you to put a configuration like mine, just a tower, mm -hmm. uh, mm. for you to put a configuration like mine together. 
with a um sata yolo raid so two ssds uh in yolo raid so you can get n close to a gigabyte per second in uh sequential rates this one uh the thelio the closest configuration you can get you don't get that yolo raid and it comes out to 2996 dollars mm. it's a great thing that they offered that much support but don't just don't it, it, this is for workstation level stuff yeah. This, so don't exactly. 76 is I mean they <laughs> set themselves up. I mean this is a premium brand, you know. It yeah, is absolutely uh, and again they offer that support. You mm -hmm. have that support as long as the system is running, you have that support and you have like the base warranty is a year. So if something happens during that first year, you can get it replaced and after that you still have support. So that's great. <laughs> And you have genuine Corinthian wood paneling. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> you got that wood grain. <laughs> a wood grain, man. It's, it's worth its price in gold, Pedro. <laughs> gold press latinum. Yeah. <laughs> Good news, everyone. Evernote. Yeah. So does everyone remember Evernote? It used nope. to be everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so Ever Evernote has made uh, a lot of improvements in the last year, and um, they rebuilt their mobile client and have data migration to the cloud now. But the big news is, is that coming soon to a Linux desktop near you, finally, Evernote, Evernote Yes will be on our Linux desktop. And I've actually been using Evernote for many many years and i used it heavily on my webos smartphone um and yeah that is linux so it it, it shouldn't take much to port it over to linux because it's already <laughs> been running on linux devices and for for years ago too and i used to use it to not just take notes but um to send pictures and files uh to to the Evernote client on other devices. It was one of be, mm -hmm. before cloud computing became huge. That was that was a nice, easy, quick way to do it because mm -hmm. Evernote was everywhere. Well, I'm 100% positive, Pedro, that we have no worries of it being um, an Electron app. Yeah. <laughs> oh come on! Of course it will. Even why would you yeah. make such horrible accusations <laughs> against the fine people at Evernote? It's a web yeah. app. That, that, that's its whole shtick. It, it, you, you really can't not be Electron at this point. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it, it used to be that Evernote, as far as I knew what it was, it was a browser extension. I didn't mm. even know they had a dedicated client oh, that could okay. basically do <laughs> everything. So it's like, oh, it's a, a browser extension that you just send it to Evernote, and then you when you could go on another PC, you just get the Evernote extension, you log in, it's like, oh, there's all your stuff. Cool. I, I, yeah. <laughs> in 2020, it kind of seems like Google Docs with a bunch of extra steps thrown in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then yeah, again, it's, it's, you know, it's, maybe there's something to be said. Uh, uh, if you haven't already written that check to Google, which I have, I'm just, it's too late for me. Yeah. Hey, he'd, <laughs> he'd not the words of this old man, but. Uh, well, yeah. it's it's simple. It's very simple to use. And, you know, it, it, it's it been around before uh, Google did all the things. So and it was kind of the one that everyone is is um basing their system off of uh, for taking notes, including Joplin, Laverna, and SimpleNote, which are great alternatives for Linux to Evernote as well. But they're very similar. <laughs> That's nice. Maybe I'll be able to download it in this new app center. Uh, you yes. <laughs> may uh, very well uh, be able to in the short, short future, because the fine, fine folks at Elementary OS have decided, yep, yeah, we have a pretty good looking operating system. Uh, we have one of the best uh, app stores out there that actually has a bit of a revenue model for um, allowing developers to get paid. And uh, there's Daniel Ferre, the founder uh, and CEO of um, Elementary OS. And basically, uh, they're doing a bit of an Indiegogo campaign, which they are now 115% funded. Uh, they were looking for uh, 7,700 pounds, and right now, with 26 days left still, they're up to 8,900. So 
things are looking good. And what they're going to do is get the funding to bring the team together into uh, Boston and basically do a little bit of a sprint for a while and all of the they have a little chart breakdown of where the money is going to go and it's basically going to be like food making sure everyone has a place to stay travel taxes and of course any backer rewards that you would like by uh picking one of the higher tiers uh they will cover those as well so and this isn't the first time that they've had a uh, crowdfunding campaign so that's that's great to see but, and uh, I realized that this is my own uh, stinky butt talking, uh, it, as someone who doesn't really appreciate the social interactions IRL, let's put it like that, uh, <laughs> this seems like a bit of a waste of money. But I realize that this is my bias speaking. Some people re really do genuinely work better if they could just get together and get it done. That said, you know, <laughs> they're adding flat pack support, so I guess that redeems them. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and actually, if um, it, it turns out that if you make it easy to contribute to open source projects, you know, the Linux community and uh, we are, you know, more than happy to fund the apps that we, we so love, including funding the app center which is is well above 100 percent now it was like 107 percent two days ago our our theron said and mm -hmm. funded which is really awesome and um i actually donated via google pay and paypal and this is this I, to me is really wonderful and because because again we want to want to contribute to our favorite open source projects and they're talking about having a secure wallet to save payment methods too and uh, enable fast one-click purchasing and that is what we need that's what we need to just make that that so easy to donate and like to we be do on distro Patreon. agnostic like yes, raspberry exactly. bird mentioned in uh, in discord it's like make this distro exactly. agnostic Create a centralized way to manage your account, so if you want to install it, uh, you can just reinstall the App Center and get your apps that you paid for again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> best of luck with awesome. it, and yeah, man, uh, sometimes it's best to get a group of people together to get things accomplished, even though Pedro would rather be yeah. on an island by himself with high-speed internet. You hear Aww. that, Nori? I am. Did you well, hear the, that? The, K, the KDE I and like Ubuntu. Nori, so she gets a pass. Aww. <laughs> well, uh, KDE and Ubuntu and many of the open source projects have sprints that are very successful and bring a mm -hmm. lot of uh, progress to the No, like the I said, that, that is very much my bias speaking. So. I know. <laughs> Aww. We got to get Pedro to scale. <laughs> So I s still Something. don't know what Minecraft is, but they're fighting the yes. good fight. Ah. It's an AI. It, uh, it's, uh, the original goal was to be something like the Google Assistant or Alexa. So, yeah. well, uh, <laughs> it's kind of, uh, I think that plan is still very much in motion, but uh, they are uh, tr sort of broadening the whole AI thing and actually having a proper open source AI going. But this, this isn't about that. This is about a patent troll that tried to hit um, Mycroft with a, a spurious lawsuit over a very frivolous patent that is so generic that I'm surprised that it's even become an actual patent. Mm. But they did. And so um, Joshua Montgomery, current uh, head honcho over at uh, Mycroft, is taking the fight back to those people. And he... He's basically doing this because in the U.S., the only way to get anything done legally is to set a precedent. So you can basically be guaranteed that in the future, no one's going to try, at least not in the near future, while that memory is still fresh. So he's going to fight this as much as he can all the way through to set that precedent. Mm -hmm. You Yay. go. You do it. <laughs> we kind of need... Especially with patent trolls, because yes. they're often so frivolous. Uh, th those suits are so frivolous that how does this have even what happen? What you basically have currently in the United States is, I mean, you have uh, the, the legal services that do nothing more than, I mean, you have companies that just collect patents. Yep. 
mm-hmm. and they will go out and litigate. And you have to get this stuff fought and you have to get it to mit- dismissed with prejudice in order to prevent them from ever coming back. So this is definitely fighting the good fight. And I say good on them. Yeah. Yep. Because you know they look at it like is you know, coming at frivolous patent trolls. It's like, hey, let's see. We had to try, right? Eh, eh. But you're starting to see some judges slap them down. So mm-hmm. good on you a lot for doing that. Yay. Jill, do you plan on suing anybody for infringing on your patents? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> never, never. And you know, this is, is that because you also, don't have any patents? You know, uh, actually, I don't, but my husband does. He has many. <laughs> <laughs> he stole them fair so and square. It there happen, is. is what I'm hearing. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is great because you know this this recently happened to the Gnome Foundation, mm-hmm. so you mm-hmm. know, and we all donated to that. So let's keep that that going and and support the good fight. <laughs> good news, everyone! OpenShot two five zero is released. Video editing plus. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Hardware mm-hmm. acceleration. Ooh. Jonathan writes, he says, I'm proud to announce the release of OpenShot 250, our largest release yet. In honesty, this release got a bit too large, and I almost crushed my brain, but I'm happy to finally release in the wild. May it have safe travels. Let's start with the highlights, the big one, the one that got mm-hmm. my attention. Yes. I turned my head and I said, wait a minute, what? I was told this was impossible. <laughs> We're talking about hardware encoding and decoding support with 250. Uh, you're going to get some rudimentary stuff, you know, NV encode, NV mm-hmm. decode. It does not really good. But you, they're saying we're going to be able to see performance jumps between 30 and 40%. Um, throwing stuff in the timeline. I don't know, maybe for rendering out. There are improvements to keyframe. Key English, man. Performance improvements. Uh, export, import, EDL, XML. Uh, Blender support for 2.8 plus, that was always something with OpenShot, is it had integrated um, Blender support for making 3D titles since yes. ever ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, SVG compatibility improvements, that's neat. I'm having to read a lot of this, unfortunately, because I took the Pepsi challenge. I was very excited. Mm-hmm. I wanted mm-hmm. to test out the hardware. GPU encoding, decoding support. So I yeah. downloaded the app image. I ch modded executable, that little critter. I launched OpenShot 2.5.0 to take advantage of my 12 cores, 24 threads, 32 gigs of RAM, and RTX video card. And I drug the hate mail segment from LGC Weekly into the timeline, into the media bin, which is 1080p60 HEVC H.265 with two PCM16 wave files for audio tracks. And it spike crashed. <laughs> oh, so it's still open shot is what you're saying. <laughs> I tried. I really tried. I was Aww. like, oh, 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 maybe the, maybe it was a fluke. Let's open up Michigan. And oh, oh, <laughs> I'm so yeah, sorry. I remember Ven uh, actually going on rants um, early, early uh, in the uh, Linux game cast days. Uh, it's like, Me? yeah, open shot keeps crashing. Rants. Yeah, <laughs> it's like uh, <laughs> I have this script set at like every thirty seconds mm-hmm. it saves three. my project three or three seconds, <laughs> not thirty. Yeah, <laughs> every three seconds it saves the project, but I have to because it keeps crashing. <laughs> it, you know, I first started doing the videos like a decade ago with Katie and Live. Then Katie and Live bit the dust on me one time, where I was deep into a project and corrupted the project. Yeah. I was like, never again. I went uh. scorched earth on that. And I started using OpenShot. Then OpenShot just got so far behind. So I went back to Katie and Live. Then, then I, I drank of the forbidden fruit. I It's like DaVinci Resolve. It was like, oh, oh, this, <laughs> is, this, this, this is how the others live. 
what? <laughs> I, I, I can just sling stuff around a timeline and it works and I can render in eight minutes and okay, here's $300. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but Aww. I'm always open to, it's like, I would much rather prefer to have an open source solution, but yeah, I, you know, he, even like I, I could just like, well, you don't hate the environment that much. I'm like, okay, make that argument. I was like, watch me. Because I would spend an hour and a half at full tilt rendering on the CPU where I can do it in eight minutes using the GPU and far less electricity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And you can also actually do that when Shotcut as well, because they have the experimental GPU accel acceleration that does a pretty good job. Unfortunately, we're at the point at LGC where I don't have time for experimental. Yes. I gotta yeah, get I stuff know. done. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but yeah, like Ven was saying, earlier you can import and export edl um, or edit decisions lists from premiere pro or davinci resolve which is a really really big deal because those are you know that's industry standard being able to do that as well as xml configuration files which lots of animation programs use and final cut pro so that was a, a, a major upgrade and um this version of openshot like many other um, animation gra graphics programs, um, has the ability now to recover previous saves from a recovery folder. Uh, that's a big deal because if you accidentally uh, delete files or you have a crash when you're working on a huge timeline, uh, that comes in handy. And all the other um, major industry standard applications have that function. So good on you, OpenShot. That that was a really good addition. It's a step in the right direction. One of the things with <laughs> that is something you'll see with um, DaVinci or um, several other is their database backend. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you're not dealing with a file. I, my DaVinci database is replicated. So yes. even if we run into a situation like that, plus the idea of crashing is foreign to me now. Yeah. Like, what? What's a <laughs> video editor crashing? No. How how did I live like that? Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> it's progress. Uh, did you try it, Joe? Yes, I did. I did. Um, with the EDL, um, I actually exported from DaVinci to to OpenShot and mm -hmm. in the reverse, and it did fine with that. Mm. Um, obviously, you know, not all the filters transfer over, it's just simple cuts and whatnot, but it's mm -hmm. really nice if you've done work like an hour on a project and you have hundreds of cuts to go back and forth without having to render it out as a, a raster movie and lose quality importing it in. So that's, that's a big deal. That's pretty <laughs> cool. I, I'm glad to see open shot making progress again, because I'll be honest with you this time last year, I was like, uh, is anything How's this project yeah. going to do? So, yeah. It, Although yeah. I have seen uh, OpenShot working because uh, Nori's been using it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's like, I just need something really quick to mm -hmm. edit some video files, string them together, put some music on it, stick there. Uh, yeah, OpenShot. Perfect. And for that. Uh, she's been using it a lot. So, yeah. <laughs> right on, right on. Mm -hmm. Mate. Yeah. There's a new one. This is, yes, this is exciting. <laughs> Mate 124 has been released with and it has lots of new features, improvements, and bug fixes, including uh one of the major things is high DPI support now for the buttons like the min max close buttons on Windows and lots of icons around the desktop. And you know, that's actually really cool. Um you know, I've since I've been using um, Ubuntu Mate, I've been noticing quite a few high DPI issues, and you know, not being able to see certain icons and the window buttons being too small on my Ultra HD monitor I have in front of me, and um, it's I'm really nice. I'm glad you nice. finally got it in front of you because it was weird with it behind you. <laughs> 43 inch of uh, goodness with 230 inch monitors and portrait on the side yes <laughs> i have a lot of desktop space now but as a result running in high dpi it's it's you know i have i'm considered visually impaired i really only see out of one eye and so i've had to whip out madness a few times the um uh, uh zooming uh, visually uh, impaired pro uh, visually impaired program <laughs> the, 
<laughs> the Zoom zooming well, there's program. Your thrust <laughs> on magnifier. Yes. <laughs> yes. The zooming and magni there it is, magnification app for the for uh, people of low vision. And that's really helped me a lot. And there is something other, uh, another cool feature that's going to happen with the window manager Marco. They're finally going to add invisible resized borders. So no more struggling to find a border to grab with your mouse. That's, that's oh, always no, been You an don't issue. have to struggle. Uh, it's <laughs> yeah, there. It's, it's always there. there. It's, <laughs> it's exactly there. one pixel wide. Yes. Mm. So yeah, exactly. uh, on that uh, 16,000 DPI mice, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you kids with your fancy non track bull mice. Yes. If you've never played with Maiden, you don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> it's a continuation of GNOME 2. I, I always like to say, imagine if the um, beautiful, fine yeah. folks at GNOME never lost their frowling minds and <laughs> just made GNOME better. But hey, you, you have made for that and it works. Yeah. It's great. It's a solid it project. I've never had anything terribly negative to say about it because it's like, yo, remember GNOME 2? That, yeah. that worked. <laughs> it's that, but with more functionality. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. Completely. Yeah. Right. And um, one of the things, that, like the thing that jumped out at me the most, because it's a very nice uh, list of like, if, even if you go into the details, it's a very nice list of uh, stuff that they approve. But it's like, ooh, uh, we've also added a new Mate Disk Image Mounter utility. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're finally letting me mount ISOs without me having to pseudo. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> KD's uh, been able to do that for a long time. Gnome 3 has been able to do that for a long time. Pretty sure even XFC lets me do that without pseudo. For a long yeah. time. <laughs> Doesn't auto... Okay, it's been a long time. Okay, I, I'm not trying to throw any shit. I haven't had a physical media drive in, but doesn't that auto mount when you drop it in? No, no, I'm talking about ISOs. I, uh, the just ISO, mounting so you a can disk go in, image. You can change your identity. Oh, you ISO mean mounting and... an actual loopback device type. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Quit, quit stealing stuff. Um, <laughs> I backed up my entire PC game library into my um, external hard drive. Yeah, yeah, I it's read here that somewhere. Torn news for the article. <laughs> um, Linux-based Windows. Speaking of, um, yeah, weird, bizarre software that you might have an oh, ISO for. Yeah. This one came out. Well, it, this one doesn't come in the ISO format. If you would like to get it, you need to spend fifteen pounds on the DVD. But we'll get to that. Uh, this uh, came. Uh, this is the article from Beta News. If you look all over the internet, you'll find an article from some website. Uh, this one has managed to accrue four hundred and forty-six comments. So that should tell you everything you need to know. Um, yeah, basically, uh, someone got. Um, Linux Lite, uh, the 1804 uh, version, or an even older one, because... Um, we, we will get into this to read. No upgrading yeah. whenever you nope. want to work. No upgrades that fail, so you cannot upgrade any more, forcing you to buy more Windows 10, period. That, There's I'm a sold. comma missing there. Take my yeah. money. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, this is uh, Windows 12. Except not really. It, it it is just Linux Lite with the Windows 10. Um, Wait a minute. Are you wallpaper. trying to tell me this isn't legit? No, no, no. If anyone had any doubts at this point, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> just because they were using Arial for the font, it 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 doesn't make it legit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, clearly. Um, if you have the ability to print out a bunch of uh, labels, stick them on DVDs, and sell them for uh, 15 pounds a pop, uh, you probably also have the mental equity necessary to realize that Uncle Soft is going to sue somebody if you don't stop. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> postage is free. In the okay, so fine. first class by Royal Mail. <laughs> All I'm saying is, I now Aww. have your Christmas present taken care of. Oh, there we go. That would be. You know what? Cool. I'll do a stream of that. I'll install it on stream. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> you have to pick up a DVD drive somewhere. You probably have one with. Your collection of I laptops. Do. Yeah. Oh, a yes. blue one. <laughs> External one that I can plug into this box. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> I, I've probably got 100 DVD drives in this room. Fill my uh, old computers and vintage computers. Um, but I think Same this campaign <laughs> yeah, to help migrate Windows users to Linux is really well done. And, you know, <laughs> so not just covering their cost to make the DVDs, um, but charging for them or any software is a paradigm that Windows users are used to. This is brilliant. <laughs> They're used to paying <laughs> for for their applications, no, and they used to not. have to play for Windows. They are not. Quit accusing <laughs> them. Windows users are not accustomed to buying stuff. Oh, well, they're not accustomed to buying the OS now, but well, they're, they're still they're, accustomed to writing. They're to not buying accustomed those apps, to buying video games. Adobe. You, do, you do have no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's I, that's not the highest pirated piece of um. <laughs> No. And oh, the other cool thing is that there's a 32 bit version 32 of birds. this. Uh, 32 <laughs> version <laughs> of this as well for older hardware, which, unlike the base Linux Lite, does not include. The Linux Lite yeah. is only actually 64 Hence the bit. whole, it's so, based on an older version of Linux exactly. Lite. It's not even the current one. <laughs> it's not the current one. <laughs> For stability. <laughs> so the moral of this story, at the end of the day, if you have relatives you don't like, this is their Windows 7 upgrade disk. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Just, oh, man, you really got to hate them. <laughs> I, I, okay. Yeah. Okay. And they have no way of contacting you after you. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. This is important. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we need to get into a slice of pie. But before that, we got to thank the beautiful people that make this show possible. Mm -hmm. That is you at home joining us on Patreon.com, helping us pay some of the bills for some of the insanity that we bring you five days a week. If you'd like to get in on that action, uh, Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, uh, several Reward tiers we have available. We have Libra Pay. We have merch. Speaking of that, boom, look at that. Look at those faces. Mm -hmm. We have shirts. <laughs> we have Hell Elks. We have our faces. We have the weekly, daily Wednesdays, Franks. We got mugs. We got penguins. We got chairs. Yeah. I've thrown a <laughs> gang of stuff on the wish list when I realized that I'm going to be filming a lot of stuff in the future. Oh. Yeah. Look, there's <laughs> even a like, non wish list thing. I need some new guitar nubs. Um, but everything else is like <laughs> soldering iron, amps, audio stuff. That's just there because whatever. Um, but that will because get you. Because it's a 32 core 64 thread? Permanently <laughs> listed for yes. all eternity or until this one's full, whichever comes oh. first. Um, Carl, <laughs> my. Oh, man, I got to do this every time. Basil and Arthur. And Basil. Arthur. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. So you can see it. <laughs> yeah. Frank's a little out of the shot because I was filming stuff back there and he's a little camera shy sometimes. But I want to thank each and every one. We do have a new, a long time, a long time yes. has increased their pledge. Yeah. Frosty yes. is our new executive producer. Oh, thank you so much, Frosty or uh, Frostclaw uh -oh. in, in chat. He's Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Boom. Uh -oh. That's what they're... <laughs> you oh, found they're... Rohit. <laughs> we found Rohit. Wonderful. <laughs> Rohit. Yeah, there's his Monster Trek uh, shirt with the, with the three boys, the boys of LGC. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of brilliant, but uh, that's cool, man. I Frosty thinks a lot. Uh, Frosty wrote a nice little note, and I'm not going to read it because he'd get angry Aww. at me. But he's like, that's, you guys do a cool show. I've been listening for a long time. Want to help out? And then he messed up and he's like, if you ever need anything 3D printed, I was like, oh, you yes. messed up there, son. Oh, you done goofed now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he has a wonderful YouTube channel that, you know, he, sh he shows uh, different projects he's done on his 3D printer and, and Raspberry Pi. Very, mm -hmm. very good. Yeah. Really good YouTube channel. Weird. Definitely going to <laughs> probably be taking advantage of that because I, I, I need camera, custom, custom, custom things. But yes, you do. Each and every one of you. <laughs> Who are making this possible? Yeah. Loud, live, independent, commercial free, and for all these years, man, let's just keep rolling with it. There's a lot more to get done. But Pi gonna give, gonna it, give to it to you if you're pie in the mood for some pie. 
Raspbian Yay! update. Yay! So we have a, a first of the year Raspbian update, which is really awesome. And they've made a lot of changes. And one is to the PC Man FM file manager. That's one of my favorite file managers. They gave it a much cleaner look and feel um, with the theming of the desktop and moved some things around just to make it look a little fresher. And the big news here is I was happy to hear that the Orca screen reader is now available on Raspbian. This is really wonderful. I have a lot of visually impaired friends and students that have complained about this, that they can't, you know, have the screen readers on the Raspberry Pi. So Apparently an Orca compatible mm -hmm. browser is uh, Firefox ESR. Yes, yep. yes. Chrome, Chromium isn't yet compatible, but it will be soon. So you do have to install Firefox ESR. And the other big improvement they made is they brought back pixel doubling, which uh, uh, doubles the screen size, uh, makes everything larger on the screen by scaling, a factor of two. Finally. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they had it and then they took it away. And I remember trying to look for it. Why isn't it there? They, they had taken it away because it wasn't practical compatible. That's a joke that got a little out of hand, but don't worry about this <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that is so much nicer, especially when you're running Raspbian on those little tiny screens. <laughs> that, <laughs> that It's good or for everyone. let's say you have a Raspberry <laughs> Pi 4 plugged into a UHD screen and you actually want to be able to tell what the heck's going on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, because it is so tiny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's really because, good to see. Looking at the yeah. theme on the file manager, it's like, I'm getting a little BOS vibe on that. But yeah. <laughs> be rest assured, um, if I do see you with a Raspberry Pi with a monitor plugged in running a GUI, I will quietly judge you. <laughs> Oh, you shouldn't go into the um, Raspberry Pi store. There's like six uh, Raspberry Pis <laughs> set up on the desk plugged into monitors. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not talking about the people <laughs> selling it to the people that I will quietly judge. They're cool. They're providing me with a, additional people to quietly judge. I'm like, oh. <laughs> no, that's absolutely cool. Um, mm -hmm. Fantastic piece of kit, just all around. Yes. Great support. Um, Happy, happy, joy, yeah. joy. Joey. Powered up. If you don't have a powerful enough Raspberry Pi to drive a UHD screen, maybe you have mm -hmm. one of those teeny tiny uh, five pound Raspberry Pi Zeros or Raspberry Pi Zero Ws. And maybe yes. you need it to power on every now and then just for a quick thing and then immediately power it back off. Well, this board will let you do it off of two AA batteries. Uh, they say you'll get around, um, I think it's two hours of uh, mm. Pi uh, mobility with just the two um, AA batteries. And it, of course, uh, plugs into the GPIO. So you have a power switch and a little, uh, couple of uh, voltage regulators. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Two AA batteries. And you got yourself your Pi Zero or your Pi Zero W. I can think of a couple of things to do with the Pi Zero W to just pull out of my pocket, flip the switch, let it, uh, let it stay on for 10 minutes and then flip it back out. Yeah. But they're not strictly legal, so. Double <laughs> <laughs> A batteries are definitely worried about That's brilliant. longevity, but uh, <laughs> maybe even if you were just setting something up as a temporary um, UPS of sorts. Yeah. 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 That, that's and if what you're I was just using, thinking. yeah. Yeah. The Raspberry mm -hmm. Pi for just uh, the brains to start something up, like the starter motor on a car. Mm -hmm. And then once the thing starts, you turn that off. There, done. Starter motor yeah. of double A's. I don't know. What I, I'm assuming <laughs> there's like one for 18650s, right? I mean, if they can do mm -hmm. it with double A's, you could, with a <laughs> better, slightly better VRM, you can pull off. A couple of 18650s, yeah. Uh, I just want to see how long I can power a Pi W, a zero W off, like... Uh, so, uh, 3,000 uh, milliamps 3, on the, like... 3,500, you scrub with your 3,000. 3,500, yeah. <laughs> 3,500 milliamps off of a uh, 18650, so you get two... Uh, I'm guessing... 
apologies. I promised there would be no Ish. maths. And there we were. Um, <laughs> if you want to get in Four touch hours, with us, I'll change. LinuxGamecast.com yes. forward slash contact. Uh, we have, just make sure you select the right show. Uh, this is LWDW. If you've got a project you want to tell us about, or if you want, hey man, you want to come on the show, we're down with that. If you want to send me your audio junk, I'll put it to mm-hmm. a good cause. That's the thing. Give us a name, email, subject. You can leave a YouTube comment, but those are getting a little too out of hand uh, trying to track down. So that's the best way to get mm. in touch with us. We look forward oh, to your yes. feedback. Pedro looks forward yes. to reading it, and Jill looks yeah. forward to laughing at it. <laughs> <laughs> that's Jill's secret. She's yeah. laughing at all of us. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to roll some credits. Credits. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Linux Gamecast Original Series. Ben Stone, <laughs> Pedro Mateus, <laughs> and myself. <laughs> and what's your name again? Uh, Jill Bryant. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I, I hadn't done that intro in a while for the credits. <laughs> and thank you to our beautiful <laughs> executive producers, including our, the new Frosty and our yes. beautiful producers. <laughs> All those lovely, lovely producers. There's uh, Frostclaw again. That needs updating. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Frosty. Awesome. Yeah, mm-hmm. seriously. Thank you, all of you. That's uh, wonderful. Four years and one episode. So. Yes. Yay! <laughs> this is our one episode after our fourth birthday. <laughs> <laughs> As a person who's been here for every single one, I apologize. I don't. Bye-bye. I love you.